My guests, one of my guests is seated already. Um, his lawyer, Kwame Jantua, uh, who was also the former vice chair of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee. Good morning, lawyer. David, good morning. How are you? I'm fantastic. Good, good. Yes. Did you have a good weekend? Quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah, went to church, came back home, cooked, and just relaxed. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have a complaint to make this morning. Yes, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yes. This morning, as you came, you came bearing <laughs> gifts. But the gifts, some didn't arrive in my direction. I have a problem with that. You know, it's always good to be honest. As they say, honesty is like pregnancy. It will come out whether, whether you like it. The truth will come out whether you like it or not. Last week when... Uh, we came in, yes. there was a lot of talk about jollof, 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 mm -hmm. jollof. So I cooked some jollof and uh, I promised Jifa that I'll bring my jollof for her to taste to see whether it meets mm -hmm. uh, expectations. Okay. So this morning I kept to my promise and I brought it. So now you all know. I should be, commend I should be commended that I even remember. <laughs> he is now admitting the problem is he's giving my co host and I don't have it. You didn't ask. When you ask, you're giving. <clears throat> the law said knock. The door will so be open I'm for officially you. Officially making a request on national television. <laughs> <laughs> Lawyer, my Joloff, next week. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's begin a conversation this morning. Um, Otufo was at the UN forum and um, he was uh, discussing the role of the traditional authorities um, in, in uh, modern day uh, governance of, of, of mm -hmm. our nation. And um, made certain assertions that, for example, in the 2016 election, he, the, the, the seat of the Otufo was responsible for calming uh, possible tempests that would have uh, plunged the country into chaos. Um, quickly, very quickly, the, uh, the office of the former president has come to re rebut and say that, no way, that's not how things went down. Um, what are your, your, your thoughts on, on, on these things? David, you know, oh, good morning to, to our viewers. You know, it's a very, I don't want to use the word dicey, mm. but it's a very difficult uh, uh, topic to discuss because of the personalities involved. Mm -hmm. We have huge personalities. Yes. Tuvo being one, mm -hmm. and President Mahama being the other. You really cannot say this one is lying or this one is speaking <laughs> the truth. Or this one is economic with, economical with the truth yes. or this one isn't. Yes. Yes. But David, I think what it was is that there, there was communication before the election and after the election. Mm -hmm. um, Otufo himself, before he went to the UN, UN yes has stated that he met with uh, current President Akufuadu mm -hmm. and former uh, President Mahama yes. several times. Mm. So maybe uh, what it was is perhaps the exuberance of being at the UN. Uh, Otunfuo probably um, uh, dressed it up a bit, but definitely from what we're hearing and from the number of meetings they had, mm. it goes to show that uh, the palace had been in conversation with these two yeah. uh, proponents on a regular basis mm. before the election, during the election, and after yeah. the election. Yeah. So really, I don't think we should delve too much into it because of the uh, individuals involved. And both sides, both sides have contributed to our elections and where we are today with mm. regards to our government. So for me, I do not think that one has lied, one hasn't spoken the truth. President Muhammad II, through his uh, chief of staff, Julius Debra, Julius Debra yeah. has also come out to say that President Mahama uh, threw in the towel on his own volition. Mm. But perhaps what... Otunfo did was to soften the ground before the election so that he's setting their minds as to whether if they lose or win. Mm -hmm. And President Mahama, Julius Debra in his letter, indicates that President Mahama said to Nanado in one of these meetings that I hope you are not going to take the elections to court to hold the country back. So mm -hmm. definitely there have been discussions yeah. 
you know, before the election. So I don't think we should dwell too much into it before, you know, we start saying things we're not supposed to say. These are <laughs> individuals who are important to this nation mm -hmm. and really and truly you can't point uh, derogatory fingers at any of them. Mm -hmm. Well, my uh, other guest is also here now, um, Elvis. Mm -hmm. Darko, how are you? I'm good yourself. I'm fantastic. Great, great, yeah. great. So it's good to have you here. Ah, Elvis is the editor of the Finder newspaper. And uh, we're talking about um, the, the uh, Otunfo's um, appearance at the UN Forum. Um, and um, his, in his speech, he made um, assertions that he had been involved um, in calming tempest and calming um, you know the situation during the 20 uh, or after the 2016 elections to to make sure that you know this country wasn't plunged into some kind of disaster um, I think that the traditional rulership has and particularly the seat of the Otufo has has been involved a lot you know in um, in peace negotiations, and of course, it's not, they are not the only ones. Um, the seat of, of Tuvo is not the only one. The Peace Council, the Christian Council of Ghana, and so on and so forth, they've all been involved in different ways, but the um, office of the former president was very quick in responding to say that, let's set the record straight, this is not how it went down, and that President Mahama uh, considered defeat and called certain personalities you know, to, to accept the results you know, um, of his own volition, and it was not under the influence or pressure from the um, Asante Hene. What are your thoughts on this? For me, I think it's neither here nor there. And it's unfortunate that we've seen a Ghanaian king giving that rare opportunity to address the United Nations yes. on very important issues. Mm. And instead of us being proud mm. that a king from our country has been given that wonderful opportunity, mm. We are talking about pettiness. It saddens my heart because, you see, when we don't sell this kind of things, it doesn't give other people opportunities. Mm. Probably if we sell and celebrated this more, maybe the next time another chief in Ghana would have been invited to come to the UN. So, so let me so ask you for me, what you're saying. Let me ask you for what you're saying. What, who should have said what? I, Not to encourage pettiness. Who should have said what? That's the, for me, I'll focus more on what he has gone to do there mm. than what we are discussing. Okay. Basics. Whether I don't know why anybody should be concerned about somebody prevailed on somebody or not. It's not an issue. In an election, the rules are set. And it is simple that when the results are ready, mm. there is a body mm. that declares results. Mm. And when the body declares the results, that is the will of the people. Mm. Nobody has the power to say, I'll accept or not. If you say you don't accept, you go to court. You mm. cannot hold the nation to ransom. Mm -hmm. And at the time we are but talking about, we know that across this continent, yeah. there are re, re, continent, there are countries, there are countries that are, you know, uh, uh, very noted for not accepting results. So it's not, it's not out of place when he's talking about the culture of peace. So you want to, you want to compare us to the lower standards, not the higher standards. No, standard. that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he's speaking. The, the United Nations are different. So Look at the, the nations peace, that will refuse right? elections. It's because they have been in one regime for a long time. And then there has to be some regime change, and somebody said, I will not give up. The only time I had that fear a bit in me was in 2000, mm -hmm. when Jerry Rollins had 19 years in power and 2000 elections. That was the only time I had that little fear. Really? But the very moment he handed over, I said, Not, Ghana, even, not even when we went for the election petition. No, 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 no. no. Really? No, 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 no. no. I, I have no doubt in my mind. There were a lot that of hair raising is, comments. And... Nothing. I had no doubt in my mind that whatever pronouncement the Supreme Court made, whoever, is affected would have accepted. You see, we should be as a people follow best practices okay. and stop following uh, and naivety. Mm -hmm. Okay, nobody, no presidential candidate has any obligation to concede defeat before the electoral commission announces results. Okay, you have to wait for the electoral commission to announce results, and when the results are announced and you have something to say, you can say. So until the electoral commission announces results. It is neither here nor there to say somebody needs to call somebody to concede defeat. We are in an electoral process when exit polls do not even exist for you to tell you that this person is ahead or not. Mm. So on what basis are you asking the <coughs> candidate to concede? In the 2016 elections, MPP had a very effective collation center. So they were collating their results. So within 24 hours, 
They were very confident that they were ahead. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the NDC had no coalition center. They didn't collect any results of their own. So they were purely depending on what the Electoral Commission was going to say. Okay. So on what basis will NDC want to concede defeats before the Electoral Commission? Because they had no facts before then. And they were waiting for the Electoral Commission. Mm. And we, we were so expectant because the Electoral Commission had promised that they were going to do what? Biometric system. Mm. And that the results will come in so swiftly that we can get the results as quickly as possible. Mm. It turned out that they had challenges with their IT system and they have to abandon that process. So they have to go back to the manual process which they were really not prepared for. Yeah. Because they had migrated onto what? The digital, the digital process. process. So yeah. when there was problems with the digital process, they have to go back to the manual system. Mm. So it took them some time. So at the end of the day, the NDC at that point, if they did not have anything to say because of this, we are declared, we are, within 24, we are saying that we are considered defeat. Mm. That's why they had to wait for the Electoral Commission to declare the results to a certain point before they got to realize if this is where the Electoral Commission has gotten to, then obviously we've lost the elections. But the NDP was all over that we've won because for them, they have their own collation center. They got the results from their polling station uh, uh, agent. They collated and realized that whatever happens, we have won the election. So they are on top of their voice that they and have won. A lot won. of media so houses if, to advance. If them, NDC yeah. has claimed that they had, mm -hmm. NDC said they have won elections, it is because of what mm -hmm. figures they have mm -hmm. based on what they collated. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the final figure that MPP put out and what the Electoral Commission put out, the difference was not much. Okay. But the NDC at that time, they don't even have any collation center. So you see, when we are talking about president, people calling president in other countries consider defeat, the circumstances are different. Over there, there are clear-cut exit polls that will tell you that you are losing the elections. Mm. And therefore, when the results, and the results don't take that long, like in know. our system. Yeah. So it is easy for election to be held in America, and within 24 hours, Hillary Clinton knew that she's lost the Electoral College vote, even mm. though she knew that she has won the, the, popular, the vote. popular vote. She yeah. knew that she lost the Electoral College vote. Mm. And the very moment Trump crossed that figure, she knew that late. it's over. Yeah. So, you see, we don't have those kind of systems here. So, for me, let's stick to the systems. Because when we are trying to stampede the system, when we are trying to stampede the system, that in itself could bring chaos. Mm -hmm. Because imagine that NDC have a coalition center. And then they go and declare that, okay, we have considered to Nanado. Mm -hmm. And then the electoral commission figures come and say NDC won the elections. Mm -hmm. What would have happened in this country? Because the only authority that has power to pronounce elections is the electoral commission. So and you, once we not develop our system where we can depend on reliable exit polls, and we can easily identify that if we lost constituency A, B, C, D by this figure, mm. by the number of votes that are there and the remaining or we think that we have lost, until we have developed ourselves to certain levels, let's not stampede the process and be saying that because it is happening elsewhere, we should do it. No, our but, system no, are you, not up to that level. No, but are you suggesting that then there's therefore no need for any of the um, other extra bodies like the traditional authorities, um, Peace Council and so the, on, to, to, the, to There was no need for mess. anybody to impress on anybody to... to because they, that is in itself a recipe for disaster. That's what I'm saying. If, if Muhammad had said, okay, I've considered defeat, mm. then the Electoral Commission's final result says it's a draw or NDC even is in the lead. Mm. What would have happened in this country? Why, why is that we have laid down procedures and processes that is to safeguard our peace and that we want to abandon it or stampede the process and go for something that our systems have not been structured to mm. enable us to do? Mm. That is the danger in what we are trying to push. So for me, this discussion is neither here nor there. The only authority that dis decides elections in this country is the Electoral Commission. Mm. We don't have the kind of robust system that can make a party know that with these exit polls and with this and that and that, I'm, I'm losing the election. Okay, so we don't have those kind of so things. Elvis, so for me, Elvis, you I will stick to the electoral process. Elvis, even if it takes that. four days for the election result to be announced, mm. I will stick to it. Yeah, but Elvis, you know that the way our electoral process works, the electoral commission has in the quote-unquote strong room uh, members of the different political parties there yes. and watching the results coming as a so, yes. so you would know at a certain point whether you've, you are, you're it, failing that's or That's what I'm telling you. You don't need to. Why do you, what's the need for the rush? If you are not the person who declared the final results, mm. what's the need for the rush? And as I said, in 2016, NDC had a, a challenge. They didn't have a coalition center like MPP did. MPP no, was But they were still getting the updates. The, the, we had time. the updates from electoral committee which had delayed because they had to abandon digital and go back to manual. Okay. That is why the declaration of the results was delayed. Mm. Because if it had gone through the digital process, maybe within the 24 hours, we would have had the results. But because they claimed that somebody tried hacking onto their the website, system, yeah. they said no. For the integrity of the results, 
they should abandon that process because there, there's an integrity issue. Yeah. So let's go back to the normal uh, 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 manual process, mm -hmm. which is not part of the agenda anyway. Yeah. So they have to change the entire system and go back. So it delayed. Okay. So if it delayed and we can't wait for the electoral, we are okay. thinking that there should be so 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 council, so so traditional council. The danger we are putting ourselves in is that a candidate may be persuaded to declare that I've lost. Mm -hmm. And then the final result, mm -hmm. factually, yeah. that cannot be challenged by anybody, rather shows that the candidate has won. Then at that point, we are, we are in a crisis. Yeah, but what's the likelihood of that? I mean, the person who's, who's en encouraging the one candidate to... Um, to, to accept defeat yes. is doing it on a certain basis. What of, basis? Of, of, is he the electoral commissioner? No, but... No, he, is he, don't no, but, don't no, let us entertain no, the situation no, where... Hold on, hold on. We hold on, want, hold people on, want on. to arrogate... Let me see. Hold on. You know don't CNN, for powers. example, you know CNN, for example, yes. does... Does um that's his own collation yes. of, of results, right? Yes. And and so in Ghana the same yes. thing. Media yes. houses also do the same yes. thing. Do, yes. So there's in, in a certain sense, yes, the, the results that are coming, even though they will not be specifically yes. what the EC releases at the end yes. of the day as yes. official results, yes. they'll be close. They'll be close. So you don't determine you don't close tell enough. me. Let the let I'm saying that you have actually CNN. Mm -hmm. How robust is your electoral system like America? How robust is your electoral system like America? How robust is the understanding of your people when it comes to this issue? But who says America's electoral system is robust? No, I'm not robust. No, you listen. See what happened Anyone that had a problem with the with uh, bu uh, 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 Bush, mm -hmm. they still were able to ratify it. Do you think that that can happen in Ghana? So, is it for me? Please, we set up a system. We believe that it will safeguard it. Mm. Let's follow the lay down procedures. Okay. Stampeding the lay down procedures in these current circumstances to me is not in our favor. Let's not condone this idea of somebody should uh, consider defeat at a time that the electoral commission has not declared results. For me, if you look at what we have gone through in elections, if you study election figures, if you look at the kind of anomalies that can happen in our elections, yeah. don't entertain these things. Let's build a system that gets to a point where all of us can be comfortable mm -hmm. and say, when the exit result says this person has won, he has won. Mm. Remember 2000 and what? Uh, eight. Sure. We had to go to time before President Mills could be declared as winner. Mm -hmm. Imagine that before time, let somebody me. has compelled President Mills to declare that he has lost the election. Let me, let and me. the time made him a winner. What okay. would have happened? So for me, I will not entertain the idea of trying to persuade people to concede defeat before the Electoral Commission okay. speaks. I don't they, think that's good. They, they, I, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that when we are on international mm. platforms, we should be very circumspect some of the things we say. Okay. The, the, the one area I find a challenge with, with Utumfo's uh, uh, address, is the bit where he claims this country would have gone to war. Mm. There are two, the two different groups that can evidence whether we were at the brink of war or not. Mm. I would say... <laughs> the brink of war situation was rather in 2012, but not with this one. Mm. So you've got the people. Do you think 2016 we were at the brink of war? I didn't feel that way I, at all. I don't think the people felt that way. I don't feel Two, that way at all. the international uh, uh, community were also monitoring the elections. Mm. Do you think they thought that this country was the brink of war? Mm. I don't think so. There wasn't much so, so, that so Exactly. That. So yeah. I'm saying... We have to be very careful in as much as, yes, we want to show that we're part and parcel of discussing and making sure that things go right with, the, with our elections. Mm. We need to be very mindful because from what I've read online, some of the UN representatives were a bit surprised by that particular bit where it says mm. the country was, you know, would have likely on the into, brink of war. Yeah. So let's, let's be careful. But I think Otunfo the chief imam, mm. all these, you know, important people in our society, <coughs> yeah. whatever the case, they help in the electoral process. Mm. They do things that we don't even see, okay. and they know how best to make sure that the country is stable during the election. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Well, it's time to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. And uh, we're going to go into the next story. The, I'm going to read very quickly from the front page of uh, the Chronicle. David, before, before it, yes. we go into the next story, yes, yes. I have a little axe to grind. Okay, go on. Go ahead. There are 5,000.
5,000 mothers and fathers at Black Star Square this morning. 5,000 mothers yes. and fathers? Yes. Okay. Because of the school placement. Ah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. And I don't understand how that happens. There are, there are children who went to school, to the, the, the schools they've given them, mm. and some of them have been returned. How does that happen mm. in this modern Ghana that parents are begging yeah. that please help us? Our wars don't have. There's even a, a, a young boy who uh, uh, went to school and was returned and is now in hospital. Oh, wow. Because, yes. And he got grade 11. I hmm. mean, what is happening? Yeah. How can children, you know, go through that? Is it the system? What is it? Because <laughs> this particular issue of school placement mm. comes up every year. Mm. What is going wrong? Yeah. Something has to be done about anyway, it. Anyway, we, we did an extensive coverage on it um, on uh, citynewsroom.com. Um, we'll and we'll some be even came from Cape Coast last night. As well. To wait. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, it's I hope right. we can get this thing not right, right. Um, as soon as possible. The Australia visa scandal report out. Eight journalists indicted. Pius Hajde Kojoba Ajiman exonerated. Um, I'll quickly get into uh, bits of the story, and then uh, we'll come and have a conversation about it. In April 2018. The country was thrown into limbo regarding some 12 individuals who posed as journalists to cover the 21st Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia. The then Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports, Mr. Pius Ennam Hajide, was alleged to have aided some of these fake journalists to gain access to cover the Games in Australia. However, a report cited by the Chronicle indicates that out of the 12 journalists who were alleged to have posed as journalists, uh, out, out of the 12 people who were alleged to have posed as journalists, three were actually journalists, while the eight uh, faked to be the same. The report, which was signed by Mamiya Tsiwa Adodankwa of the Criminal Investigations Department listed Nanamwa, uh, Pokumensa, Ransford, Bafo, Kwabna Tre, and Nda Abdul Malik as the suspects. Lydia Boateng, Musa Jalil Makro, uh, Mohamed Shafiu, Adam Adamu, um, Augustina Ejekuma, and Dorothy uh, Ejekum were the other suspects. The report, however, exonerated Mr. Hajide of the accusations leveled against him. All right. Now, um, Elvis, it's a very intriguing way that this story has been brought out. Um, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Who is it that facilitated access to visas and to, to uh, for these fake journalists mm -hmm. to travel on the team mm -hmm. that went to Australia. If those who have been exonerated ha truly were not involved. The facts must speak to, to what the issues are available. They say people have gone to Australia. Initially, we said they said 60 journalists yes. and so so and so. Now we yes. are being told it's about 12. 12 and all that. Mm. You see, the last week I told you about investigations in this country yeah. that you can continue to blame the president, but you won't fight corruption. Mm. Because if proper investigations are not done, you can't get the results. Yeah. And before I go on to let me give you what happened in the Bank of Ghana statement they issued on Friday. That's mm. when they were in, in, investigating Sipton Switch. Mm. Iyoko investigated the case since 2017. Mm? Mm -hmm. All that they have to do, they say I investigated. It took a foreign law firm 10 days. 10 days, a foreign law firm, 10 days in Ghana, and they were able to establish that a staff of the Bank of Ghana, actually mm. the manager on that project, the manager on that project, mm. actually received payments from the company that was bidding for the contract. 10 days. What did they do? They came and said, all the people who had something to do with the project want to investigate them. Mm. So let's get their email addresses, phone calls, and everything, and see what has happened. Yeah. And according to Bank of Ghana, this gentleman who has now been dismissed, had deleted the emails that he used to deal with this company to receive the money. Mm. But the people were able to retrieve the emails. 
and they retrieved emails shows conversation between him mm -hmm. and Sifting Street and the payments that were made to him and all that. And for that reason, Bank of Ghana had this, 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 uh, dismissed him. Ten days for a foreign firm to know that this mm -hmm. thing that we are investigating, we yeah. need to look at the people who were around, who yeah. were part of the project, and their email addresses and whichever way they can communicate. Ten days. But something that Yoko has been there for years. From 2017, the docket is still with Yoko. But it took a foreign law firm 10 days to establish that somebody received payment in relation to that, 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 that project. Mm. You, you understand? So, you see, yeah. the kind of investigations we do in this country leaves much to be desired. So, why we keep up blaming president, president? It won't go anywhere. This is the Bank of Ghana. The president has nothing to do with it. But because the Bank of Ghana hired a foreign firm to represent them, yeah. because the company took them to arbitration in London, and for them to do the arbitration, they took a foreign firm in London. And this foreign firm said, look, if you are claiming that the contract is tainted with corruption, mm. you must be something to prove that. Yeah. If not, we can't win the case in arbitration. So they came down to Ghana on two consecutive occasions. And they spent less than 20 days in Ghana. And they were able to establish that somebody who is the project manager mm. hid information from Bank of Ghana and allegedly received payments from the contractor who was bidding for it. And for that reason, the guy has been sad. Is it this visa thing? When the issue came that parents and quite if you are going for a visa at the embassy, what's the process? Is it the minister that goes to, to look for a visa for you? If you look at this thing from the beginning, they tell the Ghana Olympic Committee was responsible for the media accreditation. And they had a committee that worked on the media accreditation. Mm. So they submitted a list of people they claimed are accredited journalists from Ghana who should go and cover the event. And based on that, the Australian High Commission facilitated their visas. Mm. So if you are investigating Pius Hajide and whoever, and you are not investigating the people who actually prepared the list and presented to the High Commission, you are doing no investigation. Now, who signs up that list? Ah, who signs up that? Nobody signs up that the list is from Ghana Olympic Committee. A committee. It's not a sports minister. It's an Olympic event. That's what people don't understand. It's an Olympic event because they fall under sports ministry. Sports yeah. minister has to play a role in the organization. Mm -hmm. So the sports minister said when he came to his tent, he said he was busy. So he delegated that duty to Pius to collaborate with the people to organize the tent. Yeah. There was a media committee set up by the Ghana Olympic Committee. And they are the ones who presented a list that these are verified journalists from Ghana. Mm -hmm. So when they say people went there with visa, I said, blame me, Pius Ajide. Unless the media committee, the people who submitted the list to the Australian High Commission, come out to say, Pius Ajide gave us Mr. A, B, C, D to add the list, mm -hmm. there will be no, nothing that will be found against Pius. So I'm not surprised that the CID said all the people they called said they've not paid any money to Pius. They don't even know Pius. They have not dealt with Pius or Kojuba Ajimai. And they all denied paying money to anybody to be on the list. Then the investigation ended there. But the question is, the people you are claiming, some of them are traders, uh, carpenters, yeah. masons. And you said their names were on the list. They themselves came and said, I am a mason. Mm. I'm a trader. I'm mm. this, I'm a that. And their name ended on the list of journalists. Yes. Why is that the CID did not go further? To say that you have impersonated because you're not a journalist, but mm. you say you're a journalist. Mm. So if you don't tell us the person who put your name, the you, we are prosecuting for impersonation. And the media committee that presented the list to the Australian Commission, we are taking you for, for lying to the electoral or disgracing Ghana. You are also committed perjury mm. because it's an official document. Yeah. If you put these people on spot, then they will be forced to tell you who gave them the names. But once the people came to tell the CID that, oh, me, I didn't pay money to anybody, but I am a trader at Cantamanto. Mm. Yet his name is on the list as a journalist. But because they came to say, oh, we don't know Pius, we don't know Kojuba Ajima, we didn't pay money to any of them, then that ends the investigation and they write a report. It tells you that we were not there to look for the real solution of who ever caused this thing. So for me, clearing Pius and Co, they deserve to be cleared because nobody has mentioned their names that they, 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 they paid money to them. Nobody has mentioned their name that he facilitated their name being put on that list. But if they had gone further and looked for the committee, people who prepared that list and vouched yeah. that these are Ghanaian journalists and added media houses to their names, and even searched from those media houses, mm. how come these people are representing you on the list? And then take on those individuals who were the media committee members who presented the list and take them on. Mm. Then the media committee members, if it is true that Pius or Kojo Ajiman gave them names, will be forced to say, no, this A, B, C, D were given to us by Mr. A or Mr. B, then you are getting somewhere. But the mere fact that you call the people and they come and say, we didn't pay any money to, to these two people. We don't know them. We didn't pay any money. 
and then the investigation ends. And you are not asking the person, okay, if you say they didn't pay money, how can you got a visa in the name of being a journalist? Yeah. How did your name get onto that list which is supposed to be for journalists? And tell them that you are prosecuting them for forgery, for impersonation. And the media committee that submitted the list, we are prosecuting for forgery and impersonation. When it comes to that point, they probably they may decide to go in alone and not mention anybody and okay. go to jail. Or they may say, I won't go down alone. So I'll reveal those people who gave me the names. They are getting somewhere. But the mere fact that they came and say, oh, I don't know Pius. I don't know Kodjaj I didn't pay money to anybody. And they say, oh, if, there's, if the people who, who went to Australia were deported, yeah. said they didn't pay money to Pius and Kodjo management, it means mm -hmm. that they are exonerated. Yes, they are exonerated. But I believe that they have gone further. They will have found the real culprits who put the names of traders, uh, carpenters, masons, everything as journalists. When I talk to the police in the report that they, they are profession. Some say they trade at Cantamato. Mm -hmm. Some say they are carpenters. Some say they are masons. So you, how come the police don't ask that? How did you, a mason, apply for a visa as a journalist? And mm -hmm. the list, they didn't apply as individuals. Okay, that's the disgrace on Ghana. If they had applied as individuals in line and the commission didn't find it, mm -hmm. it's the commission's own problem. But their names were submitted to the High Commission by the Ghana Olympic Committee. By the Ghana Olympic Committee. Mm. Their name was, it's a list. Ghana Olympic Committee presented as journalists of Ghana going to cover the event. So if Ghana Olympic Committee has a com media committee who did this job, and the people are now come to give you more evidence than me, I am a carpenter. Mm. They didn't even come to say, oh, I'm a journalist in some online radio or online uh, media also, which you find difficult even trace, you know. Yeah. They openly confess that me, I am a trader. I'm a carpenter. That is a, a, a more evidence to you that indeed they are not journalists and that they forge documents and they, 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 it is a perjury. But the police left the report the fact that the accusation was that it is Pius and Kodjo Bajima and they've been interdicted. So in the investigation looks as if they were out there to either prosecute those people or exonerate them. Mm. The, the, the investigation is not about finding the root cause actually. It's about Pius and Kodjo Bajima. Either we find them guilty and prosecute them or we exonerate them. So we were not there to actually look for the yeah, right people corporate. who did the wrong thing. Yeah. So it's like if Pius and Kodjuba and Jumai are the suspects. Mm. So the investigation is only about them. So if people come to say, oh, I don't know Kodjuba, I didn't pay money. I don't know Pius, I didn't pay money. Yeah. That ends there. The question is, how come can a carpenter go and take a visa as a journalist in a list submitted by the Ghana Olympic Committee? Yeah. So you see, this investigation report, as I said, probably the focus is that because the two people were interdicted, Let's find out whether they are, were involved or not. So once the people came and said they were not involved, that ends the investigation. But if you really wanted to deal with this issue to the bottom, yeah. those people who came to say, I am gen <laughs> I'm, I'm not a journalist, I'm capital, no. all of them would have now become suspects. Yeah. Because you are not a, a journalist, but you claim you are a journalist. Yeah. And they gave yeah, you the visa because the you, are, you, you claim you are a journalist. So yeah. that is forgery and, and, and perjury. So, so impersonation and all, and all that. Then you charge the person. Mm. And the media committee that submitted the list, the gentleman says that it's a missing. How did you put his name on your list and submitted yeah. as what? A journalist. Yeah. You to forgery, impersonation, go to court and answer. Mm. Then if they think we don't have to go down alone, then they will begin to tell you who actually put their name there, yeah. whether they paid money to the person or not. Yeah. But I see it as we are out there to either prosecute Kodoba Ajima and Pius or vindicate them. And once the book came to say, we don't know that we didn't pay money to them, they are vindicated. That's the end. Mm. So I keep insisting, you can blame the president, okay? But you cannot fight corruption. The president will be blamed if he's slow in acting. If he has not interdicted Kojo Ban and Pius, we'll blame him. But he has done his part by interdicting them. But look at what I'm saying and the kind of investigative report yeah. you have. So then how do you blame the president for mm. clearing them that they are not guilty? Because the investigative report says, the people who came said they didn't pay money to them yeah. and that they were not involved in the process. So mm -hmm. we are sorry. Okay. That ended the case. All right. So, um, lawyer, now it looks like in May of this year, um, accreditation was sought for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. And all, as far as the checks are, con are, are, are up to date, um, it looks like all journalists have been denied from Ghana denied accreditation. Now, I don't know if since May things have changed or not, but so far, or at that time, uh, journalists were denied based on the Australia saga that went on in 2018. What are your thoughts? 
David, I'll ask the question, and I'm not a journalist. You'll be able to tell me. Are all journalists registered with the GGA? No. No. GGA is a voluntary association. You belong to it if you want. Okay. Is it, should it be compulsory? Should it? Shouldn't there be a body that every journalist's name is on there? Um, because we said freedom of association in a, in a, de in a democratic uh, dispensation, I wonder if that would be the constitution uh, freedom of association. So the person can decide to belong to or not. Exist. And so with su such a thing, don't you think if due, real due diligence was made, mm. those names could have been eliminated? Mm. Especially going for a visa, going into another country to an international event, mm. when the names were submitted. Would it, not be, would it not be right before the names went to the Australian embassy to go to GJA and see whether these people are true journalists? No, GJA can't tell. But, but there well, are many people. No, no, based, no, no, there are many people that GJA doesn't point, know. No, the point I'm making is that if they had a register of all journalists... If Ghana law yes, makes it compulsory well, well, like Ghana Bar Association... Well, well, well Elvis, let, let me... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm arriving at a point. And the point I'm arriving at is that with this... Wouldn't it be right to have that kind of no system. system? Maybe. Because if something happens to a journalist somewhere and that journalist isn't known, mm. that journalist, and with all the kind of uh, police uh, um, brutalities we've, we've, we've seen on journalists, yeah. these journalists who have you know, received that uh, brutality, some of them are known journalists because of who they are, mm -hmm on their radio stations, the type of radio and TV stations they are yeah. on. But don't you think it would be a right thing to have a list? So that if anything happens to any journalist anywhere, you can go and refer. Ah, yes, this person is a journalist. This person is where they come from. At least you have some record of that individual. Yeah. Because so far as I can see, due diligence wasn't made on the names that were submitted to the Australian Embassy. It is quite disgraceful and quite embarrassing to have masons and traders mm be put in there as journalists. Journalist, yeah. Very derogatory. And the investigation committee should have gone through the line. They should have gone to the Olympic Committee, interviewed them, gone to the journalists, interviewed them, uh, the ministry interviewed everybody, and got adequate information that will lead to a certain point. Mm. So, right now, who has been indicted? No one. No one. What have we won? Nothing. Don't you think if we had actually done what we were supposed to do and indicted some, uh, someone, the Olympic Committee for 2020 would not say, well, there's a report that shows X, Y, Z, was not just all the, and so let's see how we would streamline this thing yeah. so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. But ourselves, we haven't done anything about mm. it by bringing out corporates. Yeah. Somebody did it. Somebody's name got on there. Yes, 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 yes. Somebody put that name on there. Mm. And don't you think we should go out there and find out who? Mm. You know, we probably, <laughs> maybe we don't understand what it means by investigation. Maybe we, 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 we don't know. Because even when you watch TV and you watch some of these criminal uh, programs, and you see the detail in which the investigators go into yeah. to seek information and get information. We don't do it here. Yes, because some figures were said to be part of it. The moment those figures were seemingly cleared, that's the end of the case. Mm. But the issue still is still there. Yeah. We haven't been able to prove to the Australian authorities that we have done our investigations. We've come out with our report. This is what we've got. These are the ones who are the culprits. Let's see how we work together mm. to stem this. They haven't done it. Yeah. And hence, it's affecting journalists 2020. Olympic Games. Yeah. Who are yeah. we going to get our feed from? <laughs> huh? We are going to link into the, uh, what do you call it, of this mm. world, the DSTVs and all those types of uh, institutions. But we need to have our own people there, mm. especially if Ghana's... Uh, four by four team are winning the race. <laughs> if Ghana's four by four, who is there from Ghana yeah. to say something to us? Yeah. And so I think we should try as much as possible to strengthen our investigation process and procedures 
and not say that because some big man has been exonerated, that's the end of the mm. case. It won't mm. work. How do we know that down the line, these two who have been exonerated really went part and parcel of it? Who gave those two names? Were they the ones? Is it the fact that probably these lower staff fear the might of these big men so they would not say anything against them? Mm -hmm. No. Let's try as much as possible to do what is right. Do right due diligence and make sure that the, the results that we get from our investigations can go somewhere. Because right now, it's an embarrassment to us as yeah. a country. Anyway, off the back of that, um, it looks like we are on a roll right now with um, reports that should have come in uh, earlier on are uh, rolling in now. You know, uh, some people suggest that the president is, because of the pressure that is being put on him, now suddenly reports are coming in. But I'm going to start with you and take you to the Ayawaso West uh, war gun um, troubles that happened. And the NDC had earlier demanded that uh, Mrs. Uh, Peter Otukuno, who is the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, had said in a City News interview, we have gone beyond the realm of assurances because... Uh, the work has been done, so let us see the report. Is it too difficult to release? Where lies the assurance when there are no timelines? Then, um, uh, in the Minister of Information, uh, Kojo Oponikroma said in a Facebook post that both the report and the white paper on the report were submitted on Friday, this past Friday, the 13th, to be gazetted. Okay, in accordance with Article 280, Clause 3 of the Constitution, um, 1992 Constitution, um, the government on Friday, uh, 13th September 2019, submitted for gazetting and publication the report and its white paper on the Ayawaso West Wagon Commission of Inquiry. The commission was established on the on the 8th of February 2019 by President Ekufuado to make a full, faithful and impartial inquiry into the circumstances of and establish the facts leading to the events and associated violence that occurred during the by-election at Ayawaso West Wagon on the 31st. What, what of uh, part of the constitution did... Uh, uh... Um, it's uh, Article 280... Clause 3. 280. Yes, 280, Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution. If I can get it right. Yeah, okay. 280, so, Clause yes. 3. Yes, uh, Okay, Clause 3, Functions of the Commission of Inquiry. Mm -hmm. And Clause 3 states, the President shall submit, the President shall, subject to Clause 4 of this article, cause to be published the report of the Commission of Inquiry together with the white paper on it within six months after the date of submission. And that's where my operative word is, within six months. Mm. When was the Ayawaso... Uh, uh, the incident? Uh, no, when was the, the commission, commission set up? set up? Yes. February 8th. Is it six months? It's more than six it's months. It's more than six months. No, no, no. I think what you're writing, within six months of receiving the report, not the setting up. He says, no, no I'm no, not talking no, about no, setting up. No, what is I'm, it, trying, what is I'm, it? Trying, I'm trying to see whether... No, is I'm, not the, the, no, I'm trying to see whether, I'll, I'll read it. I'm trying to see whether the president has been able to release it within the six-month period according to... Yeah, yeah, by the time it was presented yes, to him, to yes, now it's six to months. Now. It's six months. It's within the six so, months. So it's within oh, wait, the six okay, months. okay, hold so, on. So read up it again. What does it say? Okay, it says, the president shall, mm -hmm. subject to clause four of yes. this article, yes. cause to be published the report of a commission of inquiry mm -hmm. together with the white paper mm -hmm. On it within six months after the date of the submission of the report. Submission by the of the report. Yes. Okay. So, so not necessarily the inquiry. Exactly. No, no, no. It's okay. the submission. Okay. So they've submitted the report mm -hmm. six months. The president hasn't gone over the six month period. No. It is his right. Okay. It is his right. Mm -hmm. When the, what do you call it, uh, the opposition were calling for it. You know, it was his right to say, I'm not releasing it because the law mandates me or gives me the chance mm. up, to six, up months. to six months. Okay. Now, for me, the area that was a bit contentious was bringing out that law. Because I felt at the time, and I got the report before it even... Uh, 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 once it came out. Powerful people in high well, places. Well, and, I, and, I, and I've read through. <laughs> okay. And, and 
I refused to give the report to any journalist mm. because it's against the law to do that kind of thing. Mm. And I didn't want to get myself caught up yeah. in it. And so when you read the report, it indicts the police. And the report will come and we'll have the chance to, to read it. In discuss. fact, I, I was going to bring it, but I forgot. Now mm. that, you know, it's going to be released, I was going to bring it so that we... But maybe before it is released, I would bring it and then we can go through the fine tooth comb. Okay. Or, I can, or I can send you... I'll, uh, I would love uh, to read it. A, 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 soft, a, a soft copy. Mm. So, looking at the duration, the president was within his right, his right okay. to do what he did. Okay. Um, with regards to the law that came out, I felt that we, we should have waited for the report to come out before looking at the law. But maybe the president also felt it was imperative that that law came out quickly mm. because it could have happened that within the six-month period, another by-election would have come up. And in order to, to, to stall any rep repetition of what mm. happened in Ayawaso, mm. That law needed to be put in okay. place, but you Let know, you, yes. But yep. you know, you know that law too. There were quite a lot of challenges with it. I'm sure we'll have a chance yeah. to to, dis to discuss that. Let me quickly just um, get your final comment on this. Um, well, I think that that's, that's uh, the constitution is six months when the president received the report. Mm. So the six months is within the is said it should be published. Mm. So now I hope that Assembly Press will publish will publish it as quickly as possible. Mm. So the organizers will have access to the report and will read and know. What exactly is in it? Whether they actually found answers to the questions that were they were the, set out yeah. to look for, and whether we have all the answers, or there will still be some answers we still need to look for, mm. because the investigation is key to a successful prosecution. Yeah. So whatever you do, yeah. if the president has done his part, give you the and the investigation. It's not thorough. Mm. You go and come back to the same place. So we should always give the president the criticism for what he is supposed to be not doing. But then aside that, the investigative bodies and the prosecutorial bodies must be made to sit up before okay. we can have any meaningful anti-corruption fight in this country. Anything less than that, we will change the government, change the people who are the president, we will still remain at the same place because the processes and procedures will remain the same. And we say change is the only constant thing in life. If right. you want to get the corruption fight done, focus on the police, the investigators, and the court. That is where we should be focusing now. Okay. Not, right. not only blaming the president. It will take us nowhere. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much to my guests um, who, uh, who joined me this morning. Um, Elvis Dako, who is the editor of the Final Newspaper, and also Kwame Jantua, who is a lawyer and the former vice chair of PIAC. Well, thank you, too, for watching this segment of the show. We'll be back with the next segment. Don't go anywhere.